Hi, you guys. I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. And today I want to talk to you about stagflation, what it is, why it happens, and if it's about to happen. All right, so first off, some of you may be wondering what the heck is stagflation? Stagflation occurs when the economy stagnates at the same time inflation occurs. That means prices are rising, that is, you know, with inflation, but the economy isn't doing anything great. This is what happened all through the 70s, right? Stagflation often leads to increased unemployment due to reduced output of businesses, and it reduces the ability to buy necessary goods and services from inflation due to increased prices. So this is a nasty, nasty place to be. Now, what are some of the signs that we're really starting to slide into stagflation right now? Now, in order to understand if we're heading into stagflation, we need to know what causes it. So stagflation occurs when the economy can't produce as much output for a number of reasons. For example, back in the 70s, stagflation happened because there was a dramatic increase in the price of oil right in conjunction with a whole bunch of supply shocks which are shortages in products used to produce other goods and services. So all of a sudden, nothing's happening in the economy. The second piece of the puzzle is rising prices. That's the inflationary side, which in the 1970s were caused by some of the same factors. You get a shortage of supply and you get a big rise in the fundamental energy price like oil and bingo. You've got inflation and no economic growth. So are we heading for that again? following the few crazy years we have just had. Well, first, I'd like to add that if you're worried about how stagflation is going to impact you, or even maybe just inflation might impact your investing strategy, then just head to the link below. Use my value investing cheat sheet, which is pretty cool. So you can be confident how to invest in any market condition. All right, so we already know we're experiencing inflation. That's pretty obvious. Uh, the CPI last year was at 7%. The shadow inflation rate, meaning the way it's actually being calculated back many years ago before the government started playing with the inflation rate calculation, is running 15% and has averaged 10% on the last 20 years. So if you wonder why you're not able to do as much with the money you're earning at your job, that's why. Rising prices of food, gas, housing, basically everything, to name a few essential goods, right, is just evident everywhere. We also don't, by the way, just one comment on how the feds calculate this stuff. They go out to figure out how much housing is impacting the inflation rate, um, which is a major part of the, of the CPI, housing is, by calling 50,000 people and asking them what you'd rent your house for. Now, why don't they just go out and find out what houses are renting for and compare that to what they used to rent for? And that's what they used to do. But they don't do it anymore because they're trying to figure out how to lower inflation. <laughs> they're not actually lowering it. They're just lowering the number. And that's because Social Security is tied to inflation. And the higher the inflation rate, the more the federal government has to print money to cover it, which causes more inflation. So here's what they do. They go out and they call people and get this goofy number about what you might rent your house for. Rather than looking at the rental rates, which rose 17% last year across the nation, and what the CPI uses for housing indicates a 3.2% increase. And that's why it's at 7% instead of much higher. They just kind of play with the numbers. Well, okay, let's talk about a few other things. Rising prices in housing, essential goods, evident everywhere. And the economy is struggling, right? We've got a big supply squeeze Industries are struggling to get the raw materials necessary to even make anything. And that doesn't necessarily mean stagnation is on the horizon, right? The current state of inflation has largely been due to increase in demand pulling for goods and services, which is a hallmark of recovering economy, not a stagnating economy, which is kind of good, all right? Additionally, economists believe the current issues in the supply chain, they're going to work themselves out over the next year or two. And that won't lead to a bottlenecked economy. So that part's good. If we've learned anything over the past two years, there's always a chance that stagnation could occur. But I wouldn't be too worried about the stagnating part of things yet. What you might want to be worried about is the inflating part of it. Get this. We, the federal government, just printed 80% of all of the dollars ever printed in U.S. history. 
In the last two years, we have added, well, two years ago, the amount of M1 money supply in the United States was $4 trillion. Today, it's $20 trillion. They added $16 trillion to the available money supply, and you can count on that to really jack inflation up. People think they got more money, they buy more stuff, and of course, when we got a supply squeeze, it gets worse and worse. So how do you get prepared for this stuff? Well, you learn to invest. Turns out, rule one investors do extremely well, extremely well in an inflationary or stagnating environment. And that's going to ensure, learning how to do this will ensure that you can beat inflation and you can continue to grow your wealth in any market. And by the way, if you're a rule one investor, you already know how to combat the effects of a stagnant economy and rising inflation. Absolutely, you're going to go out and buy wonderful businesses when they go on sale in this goofy market, and they will. You're going to buy them, and the wonderful businesses smash inflation. They use inflation and stagflation to become bigger, better, badder, and, and, and just much more dominant in their area. So if you can get those companies, you will become so anti-fragile to all this stuff. Now, if you need a bit more guidance on how to do that, I'm going to suggest you grab my value investing guide at the link below. And now I'd like to hear from you. Do you think we're headed for stagflation or what? So leave a comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching. Now go play. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about stagflation, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel and don't forget, click the button on the screen. You got a free gift. Thanks again for watching.